Okay, I've been getting some requests on how to build your own HVAC monitoring device Wi-Fi for less than $50. So I'm going to go through how I built mine. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the Shelly Plus One. This is a Wi-Fi smart switch. This is what's going to connect to Wi-Fi. Now in order to power it, you have three different choices here. You've got uh, DC 12 volts, which is what I recommend. AC 110 to 240 volts, so you could actually hook this to the line voltage of either a gas furnace or an air handler or an AC or heat pump. Uh, and then you also have the ability to hook it up to 24 to 48 volt DC, which I have not done yet. I suggest using 24 volts AC, that way you keep everything low voltage inside your enclosure. In order to do that, you're going to need this adapter, and this is going to take 24 volts AC to 12 volts DC in order to power this device here. Okay, so our temperature add-on module simply clips on to the back of our Shelly Plus. What this add-on module does is gives the Shelly Plus the ability to read up to five digital temperature sensors. We're going to use two of them for supply and return air temperature and two of them for liquid and vapor line temperature. Let's talk about what tools you're going to need. You're going to need a way to drill a hole into this box for your wires to come out. So I've got just a small drill here. You can use a hole saw. I've got a step bit here that'll make a hole big enough for my Romex connector. We've also got a small pocket screwdriver with an assortment of Phillips and flathead in different sizes. Not all of them have the same screw terminal sizes. And finally, a good pair of wire strippers. Next thing you're going to do is lay out where you're going to put these devices. Now, there's going to be a lot of wiring in here. This time, what we're going to do, we're going to get a Romex connector, and we're going to drill the half-inch hole right here. That's where we're going to have all of our sensor wires coming out. All right, we've got a Romex connector installed. The next thing we're going to do is start wiring up our devices. All right, so I've brought my sensors and my thermostat wire into the box with plenty of room to work on, and I've strip them back about an inch or so. We'll trim them back a little bit more as we go. Uh, and for this particular install, I'm going to be using four of those eight conductors. Uh, in this case, I just had 18.8. So I cut the extra wires back, put a little bit of electrical tape on there. Not too much because it's going to get crowded in this box and you don't want to make things any more bulky than they need to be. So the first thing we did was tie in our 24 volts. This little plug is going to go in right there. Next thing we're going to do is tie in our 12 volt DC. Now that's going to jump between this device and the Shelly Plus One. All right, so I've got my AC and my DC wires connected. Now I just need to connect these DC wires to my Shelly device. Okay, make sure you are wiring this correctly to how you are powering it because there are several uh, input voltages available on the Shelly Plus. You've got to wire it a different way for each voltage. So in this case, we're using 12 volts DC. So this is how we're going to wire it. Okay, so the reason why I brought two additional thermostat wires into the Shelly device is because this is a Wi-Fi smart relay. And so there's no sense in using this device and not at least giving yourself the option of being able to switch something remotely later on. So uh, you can wire it up this way. This is a set of contacts. Here you see the contact ratings. You can, uh, 18 8 is not really rated for anything more than low voltage anyway, but I always give myself the option of wiring this switch up because you never know what you may want to do later on. All right, now we have just wired up all the sensors. Now there are three different sets of terminals for these four sensors. So the very first one, if you're looking at it from this view, from left to right, the very first one takes two sensors that are doubled up, red to red, yellow and yellow, black to black. And then the next two terminal uh, blocks here, just take red, yellow, black, then red, yellow, black. I know it's a little hard to see because there's some other wires in the way, but just follow the manual to the uh, Shelly Plus One add-on. That's the manual that you're going to want to look for for the wiring of the sensors themselves. Okay, we're going to slide everything in the box. We're going to just be really careful with our wires. Try to use good cable management techniques. Don't cut your wires too long. Make sure that you don't have a lot of wires sticking out of your terminal so that nothing gets shorted out. Everything fits very snug in this box. We're gonna go ahead and put the cover on the box. The box is closed up. I've got my wires coming out. My Romex connectors tightened up. And I've went ahead and used some colored electrical tape to make two sets of sensors red and blue and red and blue because one set is going to go 
in the supply and return plenum. The other one's going to be clamped to the vapor and the liquid line. I also went ahead and stripped back the wires that are coming uh, from my device. Obviously red and blue are my 24 volts that I'll hook up to and my black and white will be my auxiliary contacts which I can pretty much control whatever I want to as long as it's low voltage and low amps. All right, one little touch that I did is I just got some magnets from the hardware store, glued them on there so that this unit can sit on top of the air handler. All right, the next thing to do is to download the Shelly app and create an account if you have not done so already. And I'm going to show you how to first connect to Bluetooth, and then we'll connect Wi-Fi, and then we'll see what the finished product looks like on the Shelly app. Okay, so our little kit here is attached to our unit via the magnets. Uh, disregard all those controls there. They're, those are just other experiments that I'm running. But if you notice here, our thermostat wire has our red and our blue, and that is gonna go to a 24 volt constant. I suggest that you bring in that 24 volts after the float switches, that way you know if the unit is tripping a float switch, you're gonna see that in intermittent power and connection losses, and that's just a one additional piece of information that you can use when doing remote monitoring and troubleshooting. Now let's open up the Shelly app. And your device is powered up, your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi are turned on, your phone. Next thing you're going to do is see this little menu and you're going to add a device. Now you want to find your Wi-Fi network and you want to disable that Wi-Fi AP. Once you start connecting to Wi-Fi, you'll see this screen come up. Then you can name the device. For this device, I'm going to put monitor 1, because I will be using this monitor at different locations. The next thing you want to do is add a room. Now you can think about your room as a location, named after the address of your site. As you can see, I've already got a few out there with the name on them. So for this one, we're just going to put a random site name. This button here is for that temperature add-on that clipped on our device. Now it's saying that it's unsupported. We need to update the firmware. And this is how we get to it. Now we can enable our add-on. Every time we make a change to the add-on, we'll need to reboot, but it's a very fast process. Now we need to go back into the add-on and we're gonna add a peripheral. Our peripherals are actually our temperature sensors. The temperature sensor that we're gonna select is that DS18B20. Now if you notice, we have four of them because we connected four sensors to this device. So we're gonna set each one up individually, one at a time. We'll need to change the units of measurement from Celsius to Fahrenheit, and we do that here in the temperature units screen. The next thing we need to do is name the sensor. Now we've got four sensors and they're going to have generic names. We're going to need to figure out which one is which. And the best way to do that is just to take one at a time, put them in our hand, see which one of them warms up, and we know that's the sensor we're working on. Looks like we found us a winner. This particular one is going to be used as a return air temperature sensor. So we're going to rename it. Now let's add another sensor by hitting the Add Peripheral button. Again, we're dealing with the DS18B20, and we're down to three sensors that we need to set up. So we're gonna add the next one and hit Add Peripheral. This will require a reboot. We need to figure out which one of the three remaining sensors are the one that we're working on, and we're gonna start grabbing them with our hand one at a time until we see a temperature change. Well, it looks like we found us another winner. This one is going to be the liquid line temperature sensor. So we're going to click on it and we're going to rename it. We're going to repeat the process for the last two temperature sensors the same way that we've done the first two. All right, we found this sensor. This one is going to be the vapor line temperature sensor. Finally, by process of elimination, we arrive at the last sensor and that's going to be our supply air temperature. Once this is done, you can back out of the screen and now we can look at all of our temperatures and make sure they're tracking correctly. This is the time that if any temperature sensors are not reading accurately, that you go ahead and calibrate them with another sensor that you do trust. Now you can insert your sensors into the test ports that you're going to drill in your duct. Obviously we don't want any air leaks, so we'll cover that up with tape. Next, you want to strap your sensors using some zip ties. Obviously, you're going to want to insulate this one with some foam insulation. 
and with the vapor line if possible you can probably just slide your insulation over that sensor and cover it completely there we go our sensors are secure and they're insulated we haven't talked about what to do with the wires that come off of our Wi-Fi relay. We can really do whatever we want with them. There are a few automations you can set up within the Shelly app. One thing you can do perhaps is turn on fresh air at times. You can have it turn on the fan. And there are other things that are related to the temperature sensors, little automations that you can add as well. So play around with the app and do that. But essentially that Wi-Fi relay is going to close the connection between these two wires. One suggestion is to get a little label maker and label each one of these, especially if you're going to be deploying the same monitor in multiple units and not leaving it in the same place. And once you're looking at the temperatures in the app, you can see them all lined up right here. As you can see, my unit is working extremely well. Really cold air temperatures coming out, doing a great job dehumidifying the house. And then the switch that we wired up that we can get to do anything that we want is powered off of this little button right here. Now you can also go here into the peripheral screen. If one of these temperatures sensors and uh, they're not using the names that we've given them, they're using their default names. So you'll have to figure out which one is which is going to turn the fan on and we can set a schedule to run this fan. We may want to do this so that we can cycle the fan on for a few minutes, especially if the unit sits in an unconditioned space so that you're reading the actual air temperature in the house instead of what's just in the duct. When you're ready to remove the device in order to deploy it somewhere else, you'll want to delete it from your app first. And that's it. An HVAC monitor for around 50 bucks. You can do it yourself. You can build a few of these. Maybe you can incorporate this in your business as you monitor units that you install. Maybe you have a certain um, service agreement that includes that. Just an extra feature to help you become a better diagnostician and offer some additional services and features to your customers. Thanks for watching and work safe.